right y'all so welcome to my channel I wanted to take some time today because I constantly get questions from individuals asking me questions about personal finance so today I wanted to answer some of those questions so that you can use them in your financial journey so be this is gonna take a while there's a lot of questions so you know feel free to reach out to me after this video or you know drop your comments in the chat as well and we can address your questions don't forget to like subscribe and share this video if you found a good nugget that helped you in your financial journey so let's get to the questions so I have a list here and we will address them as they come up so one of the questions I get is what is the most common financial mistake that I see people make and how can they avoid it? From my perspective, the first one is that eating out budget. I talk about this all the time. Eating out is expensive. You can spend between $500 to $750. That's an average on eating out for a family of four. You can use that same money to purchase groceries on a monthly basis and you won't even spend that much money. I would say for a family of four, you could spend $500 a month on an average grocery budget if you plan your meals in advance. Eating out, that meal can last you between one to two days and it's gone. You can have a family of four and you spend $100 for that one night of you eating out and that food is gone. So it can break the bank when it comes to your monthly budget. All right, the next question. What are some simple things people can do to improve their financial health right away? The first thing that you can do is create a budget and get rid of those unnecessary expenses that you have. So creating that budget requires that you take some time at least once a week or semi-monthly to evaluate where you're spending your money. Where are you spending your money, whether or not it's on gas, whether or not it's on eating out, and also just creating that budget for yourself. You know, where do you want to spend your monthly expenses on? What does it cost for your utilities on a monthly basis? What's your rent or your mortgage look like? Then what does your income look like as well? And can you afford the expenses that you have on a monthly basis based on the income that you have coming in? After you do that, you evaluate eliminating some of those unnecessary expenses like subscriptions. I talk to a lot of my clients and they have subscriptions on their phone or subscriptions on Amazon Prime or on Hulu and they don't even use them. And when they cut those expenses, they end up saving a ton of money that they can use for saving or investing or any other outstanding expenses that they may have. So that's the first thing that you can do. It's really simple. It does take time and discipline for you to create a budget and to stick to that budget on a monthly basis. All right, next question. What's the biggest challenge people face when trying to reach their financial goals? The biggest challenge that I see, um, this is my perspective from individuals who are in a relationship, is coming up with those shared goals with your partner. You have some couples who have a good understanding of how they can work together on achieving their financial goals. However, there are some couples where they both have different agendas or different ideas on what they want their finances to look like in the future and the goals that they want to achieve. So that can create stress and a struggle in your relationship if you aren't on the same page. What you can do to tackle that is sit down together and write out what your future goals are. The most important part of that is to do that before you even start to become serious in that relationship so you can understand what that individual's perspective is on finances, what their money history is, so that you can reduce the impact of that stress about money on your relationship. So what are some resources available to help people get out of debt? Okay, the first one is probably pretty obvious. It's talking to a financial coach. You can always reach out to me 
or any other trusted advisor that you know to help you understand your finances. You know, a financial coach will help you gain your increase your financial literacy when it comes to you evaluating your budget. They are to there to help guide you in understanding your finances and creating a plan that works for you. It's not their plan, it's your plan. The other resources are there's a lot of state aid or, you know, county aid that's available for you. So reach out to find out what government assistance is available if you need it and if you're in a financial situation where you need that additional support. You can find free resources on findhelp.org. In your local area, you put in your zip code and you select the drop down and they discuss different options available to you when it comes to rental assistance, you know, affording food for your monthly budget, or if you need legal guidance as well, or financial coaching guidance, you can go to findhelp.org. That's a 100% free resource. And again, some of the resources on there are free. There's churches, there's businesses like me that will help you understand your finances and get you in a better financial situation. All right, next question. What are some tips for saving for retirement, even if you're on a tight budget? The first one that I would like to give individuals is to start small. You don't have to start investing in retirement with a 15%, you know, 15% of your income going towards your retirement. If you have 1% of your budget, of your monthly income that you can put towards your retirement, try and do that. Put it away towards your retirement and gradually you can increase that percentage and what you're saving for your retirement. As soon as you get a pay raise, so you get a 3% pay increase, put an additional 1% into your retirement savings. Again, it does take evaluating your budget to see what you can afford financially. All right, next question. So now we're gonna get onto some questions related to personal finance. All right, so one of the questions I got was, I'm carrying a lot of debt. How can I create a plan to pay it off? The first thing you want to do is evaluate your budget. Again, this goes back to one of those biggest mistakes or one of the things that you can do right away. Evaluate your budget. See what your monthly income is, what your expenses are, where you're spending your money at, and then you can identify how you can start paying down that debt. After you evaluate your budget, look at all of the debt that you have, look at the terms of that debt. If it's a loan, how long do you have to pay for that loan? Is it 12 months? Is it 60 months? And then what is the interest rate on that loan? Once you determine the interest rates on your credit cards and your loans, you can create a plan and how you wanna pay that down first. Do you wanna pay down your debt with the highest balance? Or do you want to pay down your debt with the highest interest rate? Or do you want to pay down your debt with the shortest or longest term? So once you identify what, what, what works best for you, you can start to tackle that debt, pay it down, and eventually get debt free. Now, I do want to say that becoming debt free, you know, is not something that I preach. I am debt free. But what some individuals want to do is they just want to maintain the debt that they have, well, eliminate and reduce that debt that they have. So if that's something that you want to do, try and reduce it to a manageable level for yourself. All right, next question. So an individual asked me, you know, and they said, Annette, I'm not sure how to start saving for retirement. What should I do? Again, the first thing that you want to do is evaluate your budget and see what you can afford. One of the other things that you can do is talk to your employer to see what options they have available. Do they have a 401k plan that's available for you to contribute to? And what percentage does the employer contribute to your 401k? Do they have another type of defined contribution plan? If you are a teacher, there are some organizations that have the 403B where the money is for retirement is put away for you. Or if you are working for the city as well, there's automatic retirement plans that are put away. But if you don't work for an employer, 
that does that for you, see what options are available so that you can start contributing to your retirement. Again, starting small, start with that first one or 2%, whatever that minimum is. And as you get your pay increases, continue to increase what you are putting away for your retirement. All right, next, I'm about to graduate from college and I'm worried about my student loans. What options do I have? The first option that you have is to understand your loan terms and to choose a repayment plan that works for you. You know, how long do you have to pay for that loan? Is it 10 years? Is it five years? Is it 30 years? I have, I know some individuals who are in their 50s and they are still paying for their student loans. So it is very important for you to assess now so that you don't have that once you hit retirement age, you're still paying off your student loan. So understand what the loan terms are and evaluate the option that the servicer can provide to you for paying down that debt. You can also make extra payments. I understand there's a limit, just like on your credit card, where you could pay that minimum balance. But if you have the funds available, pay extra towards that principal of that student loan so that you can pay it off even faster. Finally, if you exhaust all the other options, you can also speak to a financial advisor or the financial counselor at your school so that you can evaluate what options you have to pay off your student loan debt. All right, next, I'm starting a new job and I want to make sure I'm taking advantage of all the benefits. What should I ask my employer? All right, so, if you don't know, I also work in human resources, so I get this question a lot. One of the things that you wanna evaluate when you start work for a new employer is you wanna evaluate your salary. First, what is your salary going to look like starting to work for that new employer? And what are the costs that you're going to have to pay out of pocket once you begin employment? One of the biggest expenses that people pay is for medical or dental and health, health insurance, basically. So what options are available? Is there a PPO plan? Is there an HMO plan? And what are you going to have to pay? What's the employer's cost? And then what's your cost? So what percentage is cost shared by the employer? Because that can help determine your take home pay. When you understand all of the things that you will have coming out of your paycheck. The other thing that you want to ask that employer is what are the retirement options that are available? Is it, are you automatically enrolled or do you have to enroll on your own to start contributing to your retirement? If the employer has a defined contribution plan, also understand what the percentage that the employer is putting away into that defined contribution plan for you. And can you contribute to that defined contribution plan as well? The final one is how often do I get paid? Are you paid on a weekly basis? Are you paid on a bi-weekly basis, semi-monthly or monthly basis? This will help you manage your finances for your personal income and help you understand what you can afford on a monthly basis when it comes to your expenses. All right, now, you know, I have one question that I'm starting to get, you know, and it's actually personally, you know, I just become a grandmother. So, you know, I was like, let me talk to my future daughter-in-law and my son about their finances is that you know my spouse and I are planning to have a baby soon how can we make sure our finances are in order for this major life change now when you start to consider having children it is a significant financial increase that will affect your budget when you have to afford pampers when you have to pay for baby formula when you have to pay for daycare and one of the employees that I have worked with before has said that she decided to resign from her employment because childcare was too expensive. It was cheaper for her to stay at home and take care of her child for the first two years instead of her continuing to work. I think she was, you know, an entry level employee, her spouse worked, so she found it 
more affordable to stay at home than to pay for a child care to pay for those child care costs child care costs can range between two hundred dollars a week and if you're spending one thousand dollars on child care costs and that's just for one child it could ruin your budget and put you deeper into debt so it's important to consider all of the costs that come with having a child those medical costs and the monthly costs after that child is born as well all right now let's get into some investing questions um i have some individuals who you know are new to investing and they want to know where to start the first step that you want to take when you begin investing is to evaluate your risk tolerance or do you have a high risk tolerance when it comes to investing? That means if you invest your money into some risky funds, do you have money set aside where if you lose 33% of that investment, where you're gonna be able to survive financially? Or do you have a low risk tolerance where if you do lose 1% of that money that you're invested, that you're going to be stressed out? So it's in important to initially consider what your risk tolerance is. Talk to a financial advisor. They can help you evaluate, you know, what your goals are towards investing and evaluate what that risk tolerance is and provide some products that you can invest in according to what your risk aversion is. All right, next. What are some of the best investment options for people with a short term time horizon. Me personally, I like to invest in CDs, savings accounts, and um, high interest savings accounts when I'm looking to invest on a short term basis. So CDs are certificates of deposits and you can find these at many financial institutions. You can invest in 90 day certificates of deposits, one year certificates of deposits, and up to three to five years. There are some that are even longer term, but the bank will let you know what the interest rate that you can receive on those short term investments. And it's a very low risk tolerance when you invest in a CD. If you do decide to take the money out early, there's a penalty. But if you are looking to invest on a short time horizon, a certificate, a deposit, or just putting your money away in a traditional savings account or a high interest savings account can help you protect your invest your money that you have, but then you can also take that money out if you need it within the near future. On the other side of that is what can I do with my money if I'm interested in investing in the long term, looking at that long term time horizon? Well, with that, I suggest, you know, talking to a financial advisor so they can recommend some long term products. So with that, you can invest in the stock market. You can invest in money market mutual funds. You can also invest in savings bonds. Savings bonds typically mature between 20 and 30 years. And if you are okay with your money sitting in that account for that long, and if you don't need it within the near future, then those are some good products for those who are looking to invest on the long term. All right. So how can I protect my investments from market risk? With investing, there's risk in everything. There is nothing that is 100% risk free because again, if you need that money that and you take it out before that maturity date hits, you may suffer some penalties. So again, there is not an investment that's 100% risk free. There are accounts where you can put it into where you eliminate that risk, which is a savings account. But again, that's not a true investment. It's just a savings account where you earn a minimal return. So again, it's essential that you talk to a financial advisor and evaluate your own risk aversion when it comes to investing in the stock market, mutual funds, CDs, or even savings bonds. All right. So after you evaluate your risk tolerance, I've had individuals ask me, what are some common investment mistakes that people make? 
one of the biggest ones is pulling your money out of that investment before at, at, at the sign of any bad news that happens. So for example, a lot of people took their money out of their investments during COVID and they ended up losing that money. So they saw the market go down and they took their money out. Once that happens, you don't have the opportunity to recover your money because you've taken it out after you lost that money. Or say you invest in a stock like Tesla and tomorrow you invested that account and then $50 later, you know, you lost $50 and you take your money out. Once you take that money out, again, you don't have that option to recover your funds. So if you have any type of antsy feeling about investing and if you lose 1%, 2% of your money, consider different options when it comes to investing in the market, in the stock market, because that's one of the biggest mistakes. Once that money is withdrawn out of the account, it's gone and you can't get it back. All right, so there's a couple of questions about specific financial situations that I have received. One of them is, I'm getting a divorce. How can I protect my finances? So I'm just going to tell you this. If you have the opportunity, talk to your spouse about your finances if you're going through a divorce. A lot of individuals, what they do is they try to hide their money. There are some marital assets that are marital assets like 401k, pension plans, defined contribution plans. Those are marital assets that your spouse has a right to. And if there is an investigation that's completed and it's found that you have been hiding some of those funds, then you know you could suffer the consequences. So if you do have you know assets that you have and you don't want your spouse to you know get access to, have that conversation with them about outstanding credit card debt that you have, about the mortgage, about your retirement accounts. You know, try to come to an amicable agreement on who's supposed to keep what and who's responsible for what finances when you're going through a divorce. All right, the next question is, I'm planning to buy a house. What should I know about mortgages? The first thing that you want to do is shop around. Don't go to the first mortgage broker that provides you with that loan that looks great say they are offering you a seven percent loan 30 year term shop around you could find that there is another mortgage company or a loan um, that's available that could be three percent or four percent and you can get it at a 15 year term or a 20 year term so shop around for your mortgage again don't stick with the first option or the first lender that is going to provide you with that money um, you know, consider, you know, what you can afford and also don't take the, you don't have to spend all of the money that you are offered. So say you're looking for a $250,000 house, but you were approved for a $350,000 loan. Stick to that $250,000 balance that you were looking to spend. You don't have to spend all of that money that was offered to you out of that $350,000 loan. You know, stick to your guns, don't feel pressured when you are evaluating, you know, your mortgage options. Also, once you do solidify that mortgage, try to pay more on the principal once you do start to make payments. That could way you can pay down your balance a little bit faster. So I had a 30 year mortgage and throughout that mortgage, I continued to pay on the principal and ended up paying off my mortgage in eight and a half years because every single month I would pay my regular payment, but then I will also pay an additional payment on the principal so that we could pay off our mortgage a little bit faster. Again, did it in eight and a half years, saved us over $40,000 in interest. You know, it is gonna depend on your individual financial situation, but it is an option. Also, once you do consider paying off your mortgage early, ensure that you check to see if there is a prepayment penalty. There are some mortgages where if you do pay it off early, you will have to pay a penalty. So consider if that's a factor in your mortgage. Next, 
Two more questions, y'all. I'm almost there. Um, I'm planning to start a business. What are some of the financial considerations I need to take into account? Um, so when I started my business, I did it 100% completely self-funded. It's uh, Financial coaching is a service-based business. Um, there's a couple of other service-based businesses out there as well. So consider how you are going to fund that business. And if you have a family or other financial responsibilities, what does that mean for you? Is that going to put you further into debt or do you have money set aside where you can fund your business so that it doesn't affect your financial situation? Are you going to get a loan to start your business? Are you going to seek grant opportunities to fund your business? You know, so, so consider the funding opportunities that are available to you so that again, you protect your financial peace, your financial sanity when you start that business. Also, you want to ensure that the business is going to be profitable. If you have an idea for a business, create that business plan so that you can know whether or not you have a viable business that you are starting. Again, you want to consider, you know, business businesses are for profit. You don't want to start a business that's not going to make a profit. So, you know, look at all of the options that are available. Is a service-based business right for you or is a product-based business right for you? Again, just evaluating those options and how you're going to fund your business. All right. Um, so one of the other questions that I get is I'm about to retire. So how can I make sure my money will last me through my retirement? When you are deciding to retire, you know, I talked about this earlier, consider investing in your retirement, start with that 1%, increase it annually so that once you hit retirement age, you can afford to retire and so you don't have to go back to work. Take a look at your monthly expenses now. Take a look at 20 years from now, what you think your expenses are going to be. Is your house going to be paid off? Are your vehicles going to be paid off? Is there any, are there any children that you're going to have to take care of in retirement? You know, what does your spouse's income look like in retirement? When you look at your monthly expenses now and what your monthly expenses will be like in retirement, evaluate your current retirement accounts and what you're saving today in retirement to see if you are going to be able to live a comfortable retirement lifestyle. Are you potentially going to have to go back to work, you know, if you don't start saving today? There's also Social Security. I've heard a lot of people say Social Security is not going to be available to me, you know, once I hit retirement age. You know, log on to socialsecurity.gov and see what your retirement options are and what's payable to you once you hit Social Security age, I think for me it's 65 and I can get a different rate when I'm 67. So look at the different types of income that you're going to have coming in. As a military veteran, you know, some of you may have a military retirement. You know, I have a disability that's coming in. So on top of, you know, my retirement retirement options for my employer, I'm also looking at that. So determine what type of lifestyle that you want to live in retirement, and it will help you understand whether or not you will live a comfortable retirement. So again, these are some of the most common financial questions that I get as a financial coach. So I hope I answered some of your burning questions. Um, like, subscribe, share this video. And if you have even more questions, you know, drop them down in the chat or, you know, reach out to me on my website at harriswealthcoach.com and I can answer them for you there. So thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with others. Thanks.